Good morning, everyone. Please, as we begin our mass. The entrance pen to find for today. The Lord established for him a covenant of peace and made him the prince that he might have the dignity of the priesthood forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. my brothers and sisters, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Amen. Well, for all of us who were tired of the hot weather, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, we thank the Lord for the blessings, you know, that we can still celebrate Mass. In spite of the cold, thank you for being here. Those of you who are present uh, physically, those of you who are joining us online, I'm told that our sound is not carrying very well uh, for whatever reason, so uh, I'll try and speak a little bit more loudly today to help us uh, all here, especially those who are watching online. So today we celebrate the memorial of St. Leo, the great Pope and doctor. Uh, there's just, I think, two or three popes that have been called great, and they deserve that title. Uh, and I'll tell you a little bit more about him in the homily, but uh, again, the Lord calls us all to a certain greatness, a certain uh, uh, desire to use all that we have to give God the glory, whether we're called great by others or not. We're called to be great in a sense in God's eyes. So let us ask Lord, for that grace to live up to our potential in serving the Lord. And we pray together. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, a virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all of our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who never allow the gates of hell to prevail against your church, firmly founded on the apostolic rock, Grant her, we pray, that through the intercession of Pope St. Leo, she may stand firm in your truth and know the protection of lasting peace. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to Titus. Beloved, you must say what is consistent with sound doctrine, namely that older men should be temperate, dignified, self-controlled, sound in faith, love, and endurance. Similarly, older women should be reverent in their behavior, not slanders, not addicted to drink, teaching what is good so that they may train younger women to love their husbands and children, to be self-controlled, chaste, good homemakers under the control of their husbands so that the word of God may not be discredited. Urge the younger men similarly to control themselves showing yourself as a model of good deeds in every respect, with integrity in your teaching, dignity, and sound speech that cannot be criticized so that the opponent will be put to shame without anything bad to say about us. For the grace of God has appeared, saving all and training us to reject godless ways and worthy desires, and to live temperately, justly, and devoutly in this age, as we await the blessed hope, 
the appearance of the glory of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to deliver us from all lawlessness and to cleanse for himself a people as his own, eager to do what is good. The word of the Lord. The salvation of the just comes from the Lord. The salvation of the just comes from the Lord. Trust in the Lord and do good, that you may dwell in the land and be fed in security. Take delight in the Lord, and he will grant you your heart's request. The Lord watches over the lives of the wholehearted. Their inheritance lasts forever. By the Lord are the steps of a man made firm, and he approves his way. The salvation of the just comes from the Lord. Turn from evil and do good, that you may abide forever. The just shall possess the land and dwell in it forever. The salvation of the just comes from the Lord. Again, I'm going to try to speak a little bit more loudly so that people online can hear. Uh, today we welcome in a special way our sixth graders who I think are with us every, um, every Tuesday for our morning mass. I'm not sure if there's another class that joins them. But anyway, uh, a little bit about Pope St. Leo. He was made Pope in 440. He was elected to be Pope in that year, 440. For those of you that know your world history, that was about the time that the Roman Empire was really beginning to fall apart. So that empire had held that whole Mediterranean world together. And uh, so now the, the surrounding bar, what are called the barbarian tribes were attacking the, the outskirts of the Roman Empire and threatening Rome itself, including a famous uh, barbarian called Attila the Hun. Some of you might remember that from their uh, grammar school classes. And uh, Pope St. Leo, being the head of the church, the church was the uh, most viable, uh, the strongest organization at that time in the Roman Empire. And he took it upon himself to try to make peace with these barbarian tribes, especially with Admiral the Hun. And so he put off the falling of the Roman Empire because of his efforts. He was a great administrator, was able to organize and, and do things in, in, uh, very, very, um, 
you would want to say, uh, capable ways. But he also, at the same time, there were, at that point in the fifth century, a number of heresies, uh, untruths that were afflicting the church from within. So as Pope, he addressed those things as well. But he never lost touch with a pastoral touch. He was a man who loved his people, who loved the church. And so he, he's very, very uh, deservedly called the great, Pope St. Leo the Great, one of the great popes of our entire church history, and especially that time in the, the, the late ancient times, early Middle Ages, that really held the church and really Western civilization together because of his efforts. I want to just segue into the, the gospel reading, which uh, reminds us that we are all servants of God. And uh, I'm going to talk to the sixth graders just for a little bit. I'm sure at your age, uh, you're probably receiving an allowance from your parents uh, for doing certain things around the house. Many of us grew up with that kind of thing. You know, your parents give you something for doing those, uh, those chores. Uh, but that does not mean that you should get paid for every little good thing you do. So uh, you don't have to get paid for saying thank you. That's just something you should do because you're a good person. You shouldn't get paid for not fighting with your siblings because that's what's expected of you. So uh, to translate that to us who are adults, what Jesus is saying in this gospel is don't expect blessings and extra rewards just for being who you are called to be as a Christian. What can happen to us, and that means young people as well as old people, uh, we can have a sense of entitlement. And you'll hear that more and more. I deserve this because. Some of us priests are guilty of that. I'm a priest, therefore I deserve to be respected. I deserve you to give me gifts. I deserve, it's just because I'm a priest. No, I'm a servant just like you. I'm a sinner just like you and so on. Whether you're a priest, bishop, pope, doesn't matter. We don't get extra perks just because of position or or even if we do something that's really good in our lives, so often we can say, I deserve this. Now, let me just say, you worked hard. It's okay to expect, you know, I can take a break. I, I worked hard today or this week or I've been really tackling with this difficult issue. I want to take a break, take a vacation, whatever. That's fine. But when we get to the point of saying uh, to ourselves, you know, I deserve this special thing just because I'm a good person or whatever. But especially in our relationship with God, we can never say, God, you owe me. I deserve this from you. I went to daily mass today. It was 50 degrees. So, God, I deserve you to give me what I prayed for. Or I'm going to say this novena for nine days. So, God, you, I expect you to give me what, what I'm praying for. No, we cannot do that to God. So that's what Jesus is saying especially. We're God's servants, and we're expected to simply worship God, to do the best we can. It doesn't mean that God owes us anything. God gives us blessings out of his love and goodness, but we cannot say, God, you're in my debt. You owe me this. I deserve this. So often we can use that kind of thinking to get us into sinful behavior. I, I worked hard today, so I'm going to take a little break. I'm going to look at some pornography on, on, the, on the computer. I'm not hurting anybody, and I deserve it. I deserve this. Or I'm going to drink, you know, until I get drunk. I deserve it. I have been working really hard. No, we can't do that, especially leading us into sinful behavior. But even just that mentality of I deserve, I deserve. The, the antidote to that sense of entitlement is simply gratitude. And we're entering into the season of Thanksgiving that should be our attitude always, to be grateful just because we're alive, just because we have the gifts that have been given to us by God. It's nothing we deserve. It's just God out of his goodness has given us his love, his blessings, the gifts, and so on. So let us keep that sense of gratitude in our hearts and minds always. Lord, thank you for letting me serve you. I don't you know, you don't have to pay me anything. You don't have to give me a reward. I just do it out of a sense of love, a sense of love and gratitude. That should be the way that we live out our lives.
Now we stand and offer our prayers to the Lord this morning. Lord, we do thank you for simply being alive, for our faith, for family, friends, for health, all those good things that we enjoy. And even in the midst of trials and challenges, help us not to be disappointed that you have not given us what we want. Help us to have always grateful hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord and we pray for all of us too, Lord, that we continue to serve you with all of our hearts and uh, not have a sense of entitlement, that we continue to uh, challenge ourselves to grow in our faith and to serve you all of our lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord we continue to pray for unity in our church, in our country, in our world, that we would all realize that we are all God's children and that we need to work together for the good of all and not simply separate into divisions into partisanship that uh, somehow that, that sense of gratitude and, and cohesiveness and the good of all would overcome the divisions that separate us. We pray to the Lord. And this morning our Mass is especially offered for intention for John Paul Dye, D-Y, I think that's how you pronounce the name. And this evening's intention is for Dominga Dahino. So we lift them both up to the Lord, that God would bless them and their needs. We pray to the Lord. Amen. Let us pray for our school children, our sixth graders who are watching now, and all of our school children, and not just in our school, but all throughout, that they would grow up with grateful hearts and uh, share the faith of God that has been given to them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, and in a few moments of silence, let's offer our personal needs to the Lord this morning. For all these intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, give us grateful hearts. We thank you for all that you do in us and through us and with us. We make our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, and will become our, the, for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, will become our spiritual drink. Lord, we ask that you to plead with us and to accept the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquities, cleanse me from my sin. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that this our sacrifice, that we ourselves might be acceptable to our loving and almighty God. Through the offerings made here, we pray, O oh Lord, graciously shed light on your church so that your flock may everywhere prosper and that under your governance the shepherds may become pleasing to your name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right. it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as on the festival of St. Leo the Great, you bid your church rejoice, 
so too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life, teach her by his words of preaching, and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so with a company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Pope St. Leo the Great, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis our Pope, and Jose our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. 
through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And now we join together in praying the words Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. May the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Thank you. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Brothers and sisters, behold Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. And once again, we'll say together the after spiritual communion for those who cannot join us today this evening. My Jesus, My Jesus. I believe that you are present. I most holy sacrament. I love you above all things. And I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there. I embrace you as if you were already there. And unite myself wholly to you. And unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen.
church you have nourished by this holy meal, so that firmly directed, she may enjoy ever greater freedom and persevere in integrity of religion, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you to all of you for coming to Mass today, to those who are joining us online as well. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace, glorifying the Lord by our lives. Just a reminder, tomorrow is Veterans Day, so Mass starts at 9 o'clock, but we will be having Rosary for the Nation at 8 o'clock. Thank you.